would start by introducing, tell us who you are. I'm Elmira and I'm the, which one? Uh, I was, well there were five, five of us growing up. And uh, What were the names of the five? Well, Conrad, <laughs> Everett, Everett, Brigitte, Eva Jean, Elmira, and Connie. And your parents were? Yeah, it was Connie Thompson. No, he was my brother. My parents were Aletta, Aletta and Thompson. Elmer Thompson. Yeah, and my dad, my dad was a farmer very good farmer and we had Holstein cattle and I could go in and milk four cows at night and come in and the sisters would still be doing dishes. So I was happy to milk, help milk cows at night. <laughs> very excuse. <laughs> yeah, well, what else? Uh, we were in church every Sunday unless a big storm came up uh, in Sunday school from little and on and uh, very thankful for that. My dad sang in the choir for a while. He stammered, stuttered and I inherited stammering. If you don't think that was embarrassing in school, you'd hold your breath and suddenly the word would come out. But I finally got over it. As you can see, I talk too much now. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> Pooh, that's true, she says. <laughs> oh, what else can I say? I love being on the farm because uh, it was, we lived right near the Manitowoc River and we'd even go down there and the muddy, it's real muddy and the shoreline, we'd walk through the mud and then towards the middle it would be nice and clear. <laughs> so. I think we had a good uh, life on the farm. My mother was a wonderful cook. My dad was a wonderful farmer and I helped milk cows. Took calves to the county fair, 4-H club. Usually got a championship or a first uh, or, or a high grade on our calves. She didn't take any, I think she was just a... I did too. I did you take one? And I won third prize. Well, you did one time? Oh, well, I did lots of years. <laughs> And we had a good life on the farm. We worked, helped with different chores, and had a big house, four bedrooms up, and oh, how I hated to clean all those bedrooms. They were big, and, but we had a good time as a family. You want to add? I talked enough. Tell, tell them about your, what? when your brother died. Which brother? Well, when that, 16. Everett. Everett. Oh, how did that begin? He, he got sick. He was blonde and uh, very active in the Luther League and stuff like that at church. And, band. Huh? Band. Band. He played. What did he play? I don't remember. What he, we all played instruments. My mother was very musical. I played the trumpet. What did you play? Violin. Violin. <laughs> and, I wanted to mention something. Dying. Go ahead and just inject it. Yeah. You can talk. Yeah, go ahead. I'll be able to hear it. Go ahead. <coughs> Everett uh, be became sick, but he didn't tell anybody about it. And he would lie up in his bedroom and just in pain himself. And he was too embarrassed to say about him. And finally, one day, I, one of us went through the hall and saw him just crouching like this. And I told my mom about it. And she told my dad and he said, well, let's call the doctor. And so the doctor came out and he rushed him to the hospital and he had an appendix attack and he was in agony. Well, the doctor, I don't know, he, I guess he had a wedding or something to go to. So he left him without any intern or anybody there to look after him. And uh, uh, our pastor came and he, knelt at his, his bed all night until the next day when he did he died. And uh, my father was so upset about the fact that there was no doctor there. 
that he <laughs> think they ever paid the bill. <laughs> was this a ruptured appendix? Yeah, the peritonitis had it. That's, that's Infection set in, yeah. And he was, he was really the, the middle of our, our activity because he did all these building things and he, he was always the one to start things and he was such a... And he looked like me. Oh, yeah? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, blonde, wavy hair. And he was... They, they put the people in the living room at that time, you know, to view. And, uh, that was terrible. In the, in the living room and people count, farms of people, and go and stare at them and applaud. And we were so young. And then my dad uh, was quite a, not a rigid man, but he was, he was a strict man, but you didn't ever see him uh, too jolly, I guess. He was jolly, but Anyway, one, one day we were walking up the stairs and we saw Dad on the front steps and he was weeping. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just going to bring this right here. Go ahead. He was weeping and we never saw him. You're, you, you went up, to start over, you went, you went up the step? I went around and just happened to go through the hall and he was sitting in the, on the front steps of the house and he was crying. And he was crying, he was talking to the Lord, and he said, Why did you have to take my son when all these, I can't hardly say it, when all these drunks around here are no good and they don't do anything for anybody, and here you have to take my beloved son. That was it. And we were never you saw by him. yourself, or what? When, when you heard this, were you by yourself, or were yeah, you I with your mom? Myself. or You weren't, you didn't. I don't know. Yeah. No, I was alone. I just happened to go upstairs and, and heard this talking out there, and I stood by the screen door, and that was it. And he was talking to God. Just. And we had a we had our Bible time at night, and had, he usually read the stories, and he was just a, a great dad. Do you think that changed you, Dad? I think so. I think he became more attentive, perhaps, to people around and us. And I was only nine years old, so I... You know, you often hear, he's just a dumb farmer. You hear that from people sometimes. Who? Say that again. You, you. <laughs> it's kind of an old expression, oh, he's just a dumb farmer, you know, they say about farmers. Yeah. That maybe they're farming and they're dumb. There are no dumb farmers if they're Farmers, they have to be intelligent. Right. That would always get through to me if I heard that expression, he's just a dumb farmer. <laughs> we had a beautiful farm, 20, 25 cows. I helped milk in the evening, get my four cows milk before my two sisters were done with the dishes. So I could get in and get washed up and to enjoy the evening. And I married someone, a farmer, and I forgot to say that I milked six cows in the morning and six cows at night. You did it in the morning? You sure? Yeah, the cat woke me up. Oh. Yeah, I cat. Well, anyway. What do you? What's your happiest moment that you remember growing oh. up? Do you? Oh. With my husband sitting here, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Before you met him. Before you met your husband, <laughs> what was the happiest moment growing up on the farm? Boy, I suppose um, we kids, I don't know if you did, we took calves to the county fair, Manitowoc County Fair. And I got, I got a, a championship prize one year. We was I happy. You know, you had to show your calf and it had to stand just so with the four feet just so. And, uh, mm -hmm. and okay, so it was a calf you were showing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think first prize was $8 way back then. Did you take calves to the country? Sure I did. And I also was a dairy queen. I forgot to mention that. Oh yeah, she's a Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> dairy Queen. 
Yeah. Oh, something's funny in there. We're missing a lot. You're talking about when you almost drowned in the river. I don't remember too much about that, I but did. I did too. the Manitowoc River ran through our farm, and it wasn't too far down to the river. And uh, we'd go down there swimming. It was really muddy at the shoreline, and you could walk up to mud maybe up here. It's funny we didn't get stuck and drowned. But um, I, wa I was going to see how far I could walk out in that river. I walked and walked, and all of a sudden down I went. And I didn't know how to swim, but I must, the Lord must have given me strength to do something or other and got turned around <laughs> back up. But very close to drowning. <laughs> Were you alone? Well, I think one or two of my brothers were with me probably, but they were, you know, over yonder someplace and didn't know it. But I made it. Got back up. I was very weak and, and then I yelled to them and they helped me to the shore. So I had a close call. And you also were brave enough to go to Alaska with another girl driving. Yeah. With all kinds of... They drove it twice. Twice. Yeah. I drove twice. You went... Tell us about that. Well, uh, I was kind of adventurous, I guess, and I had a girlfriend who was tired of her job, and I was tired of my job. You were, She worked for a, a soap company, wasn't it? Lever Brothers. Lever Brothers. Brothers. Lever, I worked my for dad, Lever Brothers. My dad said that his son was a minister and kept the people, you know, straightened out. And uh, Brigetta was a social worker and made sure that everybody was okay. And Elmira was worked for Lieber Brothers and kept everybody clean. <laughs> oh, that was so good. All right. Wait a minute. We're going to have to get that one more time. Sorry. <laughs> that was really fun. Just one second. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. Oh. So, uh, say that again. <laughs> remember it. Brigetta was a social... Who, and who was, was a, saying this? Who was saying this? Was it your dad? Dad. Your dad would say My this? My dad was saying that uh, or Conrad was a, a preacher, so he was keeping people, uh, his their souls clean. And Brigetta was a social worker, and she was working with people who needed to be socialized. And Elmira was working for Lever Brothers and kept, kept them all clean. I don't think he included me. <laughs> I guess I was a brat. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. So you went to Alaska. Yeah, a so girlfriend, tell us about a that. girlfriend, and I decided that yeah. might be fun mm -hmm. and adventure. And you were how old when you did that? Oh, I might have been twenty, maybe. What, the first time did you say it, 1950? 1950, how old was I? I remember about 32. In my 30, early 30s, maybe. We decided we wanted excitement, so we decided to go to Alaska. And I had, I bought a car. I believe it was a new one, right? Who would know? And uh, we got a map. And we mapped it out, and we, was it 4,000 miles? Is that about it? Yeah, to where we went to Anchorage. I had one girl, for, uh, one acquaintance up there, and I wrote her to tell her. And she wrote back, and she said, don't be afraid of the highway. It's a few places that are tough, and so forth. We got stuck once or twice, but there was always a piece of machinery working on the highway, so we got pulled out. How many flat tires did you get? Uh, two, I think. So but all, always some man came along and changed, changed the tires. What, uh, so what year are we talking here? Boy. I think it was 1950. 1950 about. 1950? Mm -hmm. The Alcan was not yet complete. It was open, but it was all, it was all gravel. There was no hard surface. 
We got stuck a couple times in the mud, but there was always somebody to pull us out. And uh, what was what was the most remarkable thing you saw on this trip? The beauty of the mountains as we got closer up to Anchorage, and um, just the excitement of meeting all these wonderful people up there that treated us like queens. <laughs> Lots of invites out and uh, just a very sociable crowd up there. How long did you stay? Oh, I would imagine maybe 10 days. <laughs> By that time, we'd gotten to know many of the church and people. she married this man. Well, wait, now, you, I don't know what you're talking about, but you were there. Her first job was a, as a church parish worker, not a parish worker, but the secretary at the church in Fairbanks. Fairbank. Oh, yeah, well, that's right. And so, I don't know how it worked out, but you... Yeah, hold on a second. You'll have to correct me. Somewhere or another, she was... You were at, going to a Bible camp near Fairbank somewhere. And then your mother gets sick and you had to come back? Yeah, I had to go home because my mother was sick. And yeah. then she, I think you drove up a second time, you know, she'd driven twice. Yeah. Oh. And uh, uh, the last time she came up, I came up in 1954, and yeah, that's when we met in 1954 yeah. at the Lutheran Church in, in Anchorage. And by that time, she changed from Fairbanks to Anchorage, and she also worked for the health center in, in Anchorage. And uh, mm -hmm. we married in 1955. So you, you met where? You met in Anchorage, Alaska. In Anchorage, and it was her second trip to Anchorage. That's her second uh, second, trip, your, second, second trip. Okay, and where were you, how did you, how did your paths cross? I was in the military. I was in the Air Force and stationed at Elmendorf outside of outside of Anchorage. Yeah. And she was the host of the of the Lutheran USO at Central Lutheran Church in Anchorage. We met there. That was a fun job. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting we all these servicemen. <laughs> we met there through our through Hold the on. Here I'm gonna redo this. Alice, you be me. Sit stay. <laughs> Just keep moving the microphone, back. and I move the camera. Okay, so I'll you do you do the mic. Okay. Whoever's talking, but you have to get down lower because you see where the camera is. You have to get down where. I'm sorry to make you do that, but oh, it takes oh, a little more for me to get down balance. than you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is too good to miss. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now. So where were we? Okay. Well, anyway, we met at Central Lutheran Church in Anchorage, and the it was sort of peculiar because we were met or introduced by the choir director of the church at Anchorage. And it so happened that this choir director was uh, a lady from my hometown in Minnesota, Lake Park, Minnesota. And so she, I'd knew, known her father, for goodness sakes. He was a hardware man in Lake Park. So she introduced me and Elmira. And it turned out that when we were married in 55, that her husband was Elmira's father. He led her down the aisle. So they're the tweets, they're great, great people. But anyway, we uh, met in 55 at, at, at Central Lutheran Church and they were, we were part of a adult fellowship group. And it so happened that there were five of us GIs who married girls from that adult <laughs> fellowship group in 1955. So we were all back up into Anchorage together at, in 2005 to celebrate our golden weddings together. And it was a very Fantastic. tremendous, tremendous group of people. We had a wonderful pastor up there. He, Friday nights was kind okay, of... hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, all right, go ahead. Wait, wait. Friday nights uh, at the church was serviceman nights. And I was the hostess, of course. And oh, they'd come in and some would want to talk to me and they tell me, oh, they'd be so lonesome, they were 18 years old, you know, and just joining the service. Oh, they were homesick and others were happy and I tried to do my best, but I had never had any training in dealing with men who were lonely. <laughs> and I met him up there, didn't I? Yeah, and one night she's she did a pretty was, good job. One night she was going to show pictures of my wedding that she missed in Chicago. You finish it. I don't know, but you tell the rest. Well, wait a minute, Mom. 
This goes back to Fairbanks when she was at, at the <laughs> church in Fairbanks. She closed up one night and she had someone help her clean up after everybody left. And they threw the ashtrays in a wastebasket and there was some hot ashes and it started a fire. And consequently there was quite a serious damage at the, to the basement of the church and the wedding picture she just was talking about were burned up in All that, of my wedding in pictures. that uh, fire. So Elmira's, I don't know if you ever got any wedding Elmira's pictures. wedding pictures. No. Mine. Sure. I mean, uh, Eva one, Jean's wedding one, pictures. One friend of mine had a little camera and she had taken a couple of pictures but they were hardly visible and that's the only one I have left. Really? I don't remember that. But she sent me a bunch of, of uh, silverware, or uh, steak knives of, what is the name of the animal? Uh, no, probably walrus tusk. Walrus like tusk. ivory, anyway. Yeah, it's just walrus. So, that's it. <laughs> I, I sent you? Yeah, you sent me a gift because oh, you oh. destroyed it. <laughs> 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 Oh, we've had quite a life. Yeah. Farmer, well, not farmer's daughter. Any, anything else that you want to share? It's about lunchtime. Well, <laughs> Too much to share. She was a farmer's daughter. I'm a farmer. I still, we still have, still have a farm in Minnesota. Uh, but we don't. I was on. thinking about farming, but she didn't want to do that, so so we didn't. <laughs> I was but, raised on a farm, and I knew how much I work still, it was. I mm -hmm. still have not forgotten the farm, but. Uh, we live very yeah, well. We can't either. Well, what's, what's, can I ask one more question? What what was the best part about growing up on a farm for you? Having a little sister. Having what? <laughs> <laughs> Having what? <laughs> Having a little sister. <laughs> oh, really? That they tease to death, yes. <laughs> you better repeat the first part of that. I don't know. I got no, it. that's okay. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Go. So what, what's the best part for you of growing up on a farm? Well, I guess we were taught how to work because milking cows was a... Although we, we, we girls didn't have to get up or go out in the barn during the school year in the mornings. But I, every night I worked, I, I, I milked my four cows and could get in the house and she and my older sister would be still washing dishes before we had a dishwasher. Oh, I said that before. So. Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> <laughs>